All right, so considering some of those rehab or corrective exercise strategies to help formulate or help provide our bodies with more balance or more weight distribution and or more activation throughout, okay? Because of a lot of our dynamic movements every single day, a lot of our lifestyles, particularly right now in this isolation period, we're spending a lot of times in dysfunctional or overloaded positions, particularly in the anterior chain. You start exposing yourself to a multitude of angles, multitude of resistance training without having the proper, I guess, prerequisites of activation and stabilization, more or less over a period of time, you start changing those mechanics or those locomotion things. What you see very common is, if you see me walking here, people typically tend to turn out their feet quite a bit. I'm overselling it, but that is a very big issue, particularly because when I have my feet extremely rotated, I'm not actually accessing any type of stability and strength of the posterior chain, stability of the interior chains of the thighs and the groin muscles that allow us to keep in a perfect alignment or proper alignment. And from there, if my goals are to build aesthetics, like build a booty, okay, build a hand, build hamstring muscles, and also have very functional sound movement without that dysfunction being an accumulation towards injury, I'm actually playing catch up all the time and always getting injured more or less because I'm starting to access positions here. It's a very limiting control mechanism where I only overload certain aspects of my body, particularly that outside profile here and a lot of the anterior chain. And for a lot of us, it's not really our fault because we spend a lot of time working in front of us and all that jazz. So continuing some of that rehab profile, we start again talking about that external bias. What typically happens is you lose the ability to actually use that big toe that actually attaches up into the groin area. So when you go to do certain movements, especially when you're squatting because you've ran out of space and you hit walls, things can tend to shift. And then when you get into a lunge pattern, which is a very long lengthy position, that's very similar to a sprint mechanic, you have no capabilities of your big toe and you have dysfunction and things start to rotate and not necessarily be in a stable position. So it's imperative you start getting more big toe activation. And you can't just get into a very big comprehensive move and expect it to fix if the big toe is jammed up. So it's imperative or very useful to get into an exercise that can strengthen that particular component. So here's the ball. I'm gonna squeeze this ball with said ankle position. Now mine's very poor and I've had quite a few injuries, so I'm probably not gonna do this all that great. But what you wanna to try to do is squeeze your feet more or less together. Try to squeeze the ball with your calves. From this set position, I'm gonna still work on my components of posture, my pelvis is underneath me, my shoulder blades are down and back. I'm gonna work on dorsiflex where my toes come up. Then I'm gonna press to the floor and work on extension through that big toe arrangement. I'm gonna try to get my heels up as high as possible and I'll come back down. And you can see how poor mine is when I go for a side profile. This is a major reason why I've hurt myself quite a few times. It's imperative that I'm still working on some of these limitations and working on range of motion and I guess mobility or strength of that set section. This will reiterate or reprogram your ability to grab a grounding force comprehensively through your full footprint where you're not overloading the outside profiles of your feet and in turn overloading the joints into that weird, not so much weird, but I guess imbalanced posture position. Because remember, if I'm moving in a linear fashion, I'm sprinting straight ahead, the last thing you want is over rotation of that position. The last thing you want is me running like this with a whole lot of dysfunction. The last thing you want when you're squatting with a ton of weight is the inability to keep the same shape and have your body react to something. You should be in control of those components. So it's imperative we start getting some more dorsiflexion and proper activation of that set area. Exercises like the ones previous and these and this one in particular, the ball squeeze with the calf raise, will start to address some of those dysfunctions. So you stop feeling good and then getting injured, feeling good and then getting injured, getting more into those concepts of addressing the problem at its root and finding a best solution for the collection or cycle of exercises. That's what trauma and wellness training wants to do is provide you with some preventative measures and an ability to rehabilitate ones that are already currently there. So stay tuned for a couple more. That is essentially where you want to start taking some of those comprehensive rehab exercises or comprehensive rehab program now that we have time and we're not distracted by the gym and all the 
wonderful things in the gym with all the resistance training. We'd rather get you healthy so that when you get back into the gym, you're feeling great, you're moving great, and from there, the sky's the limit. You can get right back into some stuff you are doing before, maybe even more intense.